Hi, I'm Susan Hirsch from Meet the Experts. There are over 80 autoimmune diseases. The common ones are lupus, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. Out of the 23 and a half million Americans that suffer from various diseases, 75% are women. Today, Michelle Tenzer Andreatis is here with us and she has had an autoimmune disease for more than half of her life. Hey, Hi. how you doing, Michelle? I'm all right, I'm good. Thanks, Susan. How are you? I'm great. Thank good. you for being here. Thanks for having me. Michelle, what is the official name of your autoimmune disease? My autoimmune disease is called Crest Syndrome. My understanding is that it's very, very rare that there's about 286 cases per one million. That's pretty freaky and true. So whereas multiple sclerosis tends to be a much more common disease, they even have a lot of charity runs to raise money, you don't normally hear Crest Syndrome in you know the public eye. Absolutely not, absolutely not, and um, it's not fair. I mean, what they, what they do call this type of disease is scleroderma. Um, there are offshoots of uh, what scleroderma is, but because there are so few people with it, primarily women, um, there has not been a lot of money. Some of the actual symptoms that appear for one that does have Crest Syndrome is the fact that the skin becomes um, thickened and that also it becomes taunt and yes. shiny. Is that something that has happened to you? Yes. When the disease or the syndrome or the condition, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, and you have to embrace it, whatever it is, when it flares up for many reasons, which we'll get to, um, that's one of the symptoms is that your skin becomes very tight. So, so how would positive. you describe what an autoimmune disease is? An autoimmune disease is when your body gets con becomes confused and the cells attack each other in your body. So the autoimmune system is actually attacking your organs, your tissues, or your cells. Yes, yes. And how it's old were you when the disease was diagnosed? The onset? For you, yes. Um, I believe I was 25, 26. And what were the first signs? I mean, how did you realize that there was something that was happening that just wasn't right? First symptom was my hands became blown up. Um, so they became puffy and very swollen. Very puffy and swollen. At this point, my hands are like this. They're not puffy and swollen, but that's, they're curved. There's no pain. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the symptom that pretty much was prolonged. Um, and then it took, I, th I believe, a period of time for them to finally really discover exactly what it was, that it was in fact Crest Syndrome. About a year and a half before somebody could diagnose me. Now mind you, um, I had these symptoms for months, three months. And as with any kind of illness or any kind of traumatic episode in your life, you go through stages. You know, one which is denial, two, uh, anger, fear of the unknown, and fear of uh, not looking good, not, not being Miss Perfect. You know, when I was in the gym and I was stretching, people say that I'm limber. But in fact, I'm double jointed. So for me, that's not limber, that's stiff. And, and it's confusing because doctors couldn't tell. You know, they would have me do this and I could do that, but that was only half of what I could do, so. A lot of women after bearing children have major flare-ups when it comes to the autoimmune diseases. And there's a drug called thalamid or thalidomide which has a bad rap because years and years ago they gave it to pregnant women uh, as a sedative to sleep and it produced uh, children that were deformed. So it was off the market and um, to make a long story even longer, nobody would give it to me. They, they were only doing clinical trials 
And my husband found a doctor. And you found a doctor and yes, you got Dr. your... Yes, Dr. Gary Solomon. <laughs> I will give you that name. And he prescribed it. And within two weeks, my condition was in remission. And then also I know that you also take diuretics because it excretes yes. the water from your system. Yes. Yes, I do. Because you can retain water. But you know, all of that is pretty controllable with diet and exercise. So let's talk about food. Okay. That's let's. fun. So what do you like? I love food. <laughs> what do you like? I love food even What's, though. What do you like to eat? What's part of your daily diet? <laughs> well, um, well, protein's very important. So uh, a soft boiled egg in the morning. I don't eat as often as I should, as often as we all should. Because, you know, the more you eat during the day, the, the better your metabolism works. But as far as, your, as far as you, Michelle, so I yes. know that you're into vegetables and fruits and... Steamed vegetables, fruit, I'm a fruit, a fruity, a f fruit addict. <laughs> <laughs> a fruit addict. Uh -huh. Yes, I love, love, love whatever's in season. And are they I wish I lived in California. And, or dried fruits? No dried fruits. As a matter of fact, I want to touch on because uh, dried fact, fruits have a lot of sugar in they're them. They're processed. Although there are different ones now at Whole Foods. They're organic and they're not processed. Believe it or not, not you can have caffeine, but no decaf. No processed fruits. No dried fruits. Um, no cookies. No ice cream. No diet soda. That was it. Wow, I love that. How, how do you like Isn't that That's amazing? That's a great way also to keep your body fit and trim. Yeah. I know that you are big on vitamins. Um, so a multi-liquid vitamin that we order online, and I've begun taking a calcium and magnesium liquid every day. But let's let's be aware of the fact that you can't you you be you be careful not to over vitamin exactly. yourself because you don't I've been doing that lately. Yes, on vitamins. It's also for autoimmune diseases a very big no no. Fish oil and flax oil. That was the biggest. That is the biggest, most important vitamin for women with autoimmune or whatever. If you don't if you don't like the fish oil, take the flax oil three times a day. Right. The fish oil is great for your joints. It keeps them nice and lubricated. Yeah. So you go to the gym every day? I go to the gym every day. I do my own personal workout. I do 45 to 50 minutes of the cardio on the bike. You train yourself. I train myself. And I'll tell you, you know, quite honestly, I would love to do a yoga class, but the hands, I can't. That's so fascinating when you talk about that, about the fact that for yoga, certain positions are difficult for you because of your hands. You and know, it would be it, difficult for you to support your body. Yes. In certain and, poses. You know, uh, I think I've been kind of closeted for many years. I, 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 I know how to pose my hands so that people don't notice. Do you meditate or do self-hypnosis or do imagery, which would be for stress reduction or pain management? Not as much as I should. Susan, not as much as I should. But you go to the gym seven days a week. I do, and I, I kind of count that as, as part of my meditation because I breathe consciously and consistently while I'm exercising. So that's sort of a meditation for you when Absolutely. you're done working out because you're controlling the breathing and the flow of your air as Absolutely. you're doing your floor exercises. I mean, not everybody. Um, has the ability to quiet down in the same way. But I, I do want to say that I do create a visualization, which means I visual, visualize myself well rather than myself not well. That's a, my, that is a beautiful point, how you see yourself, that you should always see yourself in the most positive light. And it's a really, really great courage for you to be able to see that. You're looking at the top of the mountain as opposed to the bottom. That's really incredible. There's Michelle. no other way. There's no other way. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to have a good time in life. So let's talk about playtime players. Okay. This is so cool. <laughs> I think I heard them running down the hall. So you are doing an acting class. I am. For um, children. I am. And how I, old are the kids? These children in this class my son included, 
David, <laughs> are in She's the second mother. grade. Yes, huh? yes. He, you know, he'd kill me if I didn't do that, if I didn't say that. Um, they're eight. And I, forgive me if they're unruly and crazy, but that's part of the whole class. So it's wonderful because you, through all the acting classes, you're able to bring out the children's innate abilities. Yes. And you're yes. able to work with the shy, the shy children. It's funny. The, sh the shyest child, try that one. The shyest child in my class is the most outgoing one now, so. So I have to thank you for being here today with me and sharing your story because it's just so powerful what you're doing with your life and the fact that you've been able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Susan, and you have I, such I, a healthy disposition and it's just so nice of you to bring your story cry. out to a lot of other women out there that may be perplexed or feel alone and know that they're not. It's only the beginning. You know, I'd love to pursue this even more and, and, and perhaps at some point give a, a number for anyone who wants to talk to me about this who has the same situation. I promise you, it's, it, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's in your hands. It really is. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. And thank you, and I hope you enjoyed today's segment. I'm Susan Hirsch from Meet the Experts.